Hi, 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 Felting fans, it's Jules. I have moved, I have a new kitchen, I have new hair, and today we're gonna have a new episode, and it's all about making curls. So I started this channel so that I would have a place to share with you all of my different felting techniques. So if you want to learn different things about felting, then please subscribe and let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get some skewers. Get a bowl and fill it with water. Find the wool you want to make into curls or wavy fur. You're going to want to start pulling the wool apart so that you have really thin, long pieces. You want to try to make the wool really even and thin and long. Next, dip your wool in the bowl of water. This is actually harder than it looks because wool naturally repels water. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to keep stretching your wool out. I try really hard to make all of the wool the same thickness throughout the whole strand. Now it's time to get a skewer and wind the wool around it. You'll find because the wool is pretty wet that it will stick really easily. So. Things to pay attention to when you're winding around the skewer are how far apart you wind the wool and then how flat you make it. I find if my goal is to make wavy fur, making the wool really flat around the skewer is much easier later to make the waves. But if I want really curly fur, sometimes I'll even twist the wool while I'm twisting it around the skewer so it's like a double twist and it makes it really curly later. So you see how I have the wool kind of separated apart like that? That makes it easier to make the waves and to cut it later, but if you want tighter curls, you can wind it tighter around the skewer. Okay, let's make a bunch of curls. I find I have to dry my hands between every single curl because when you're handling the wool, it's hard to do it when your hands are wet, but then your hands get wet between every single curl, so. The next thing you're gonna need is a steamer basket, or if you have a double boiler with the little holes like this, that would work too. Fill up a pot with a little bit of water. Put your steamer basket in the pot. The reason I like a steamer basket is because of all the little holes. The skewers have the points, so they'll stick in the holes and stick straight up. So using a steamer basket that has little holes like this is really useful because you can stick the ends of the skewer in it and try to make them stand. I usually push them together and try to have them bunch in the center so that when I'm steaming them, all the steam will go up and cover all of the wool. And then it's time to put the pot on the stove. Just leave it there until the water starts to boil and a good steam comes out and starts to steam all over the wool. Take any remaining boiling water and pour it over the wool. So when your wool starts to cool down, I usually set it aside and kind of separate it out so that it'll get nice and dry. You could use a hair dryer or you can just let it dry overnight, but just make sure that it's really dry before you start to unwind the wool. Okay, it's the next day. My wool is completely dry and I'm going to take it off of the skewer. So I found sometimes that it's not that easy to get off. If the wool is wound a little bit tight, sometimes you do need to fuss with it a little bit. So I gently press from the top, I gently press from the bottom, but pretty soon it'll all easily come right off. And then when it does, you have really cute springy curls. I would encourage you to experiment with this with all different kinds of wool because I have found that some wool will be really springy and other wool will be less springy. 
So just experimenting and trying it with a bunch of different kinds, even carded wool actually will work pretty well. Okay, so there are the curls. And from this, we're gonna make some wavy fur. This is Sebastian, the dog that I am making. You can see the fur is not super tight curly, it's just kind of wavy and crazy looking. And here is my little mini Sebastian. I used some carded wool and some batting in colors that are really similar to the wool that I curled just to cover him with and make everything blend really nicely. The first thing I do is cut the curls and I usually cut just roughly between each twist. Next I take a small piece and I start pulling it apart. I can more easily needle felt it when it's a bigger piece like this and then the edges kind of stick up and it makes it look more like wavy fur as opposed to tight curls. You have to be careful when you're pulling the fur apart. You don't want to do it so much that it actually separates. You want to have that still stick together kind of. Sometimes I use the end of the needle just to tassel the fur. My whole goal is just to kind of make it look unkempt and messy and natural. See, I'm just trying to make it so that the curls are just tacked in there and you can get the texture of curls, but they're just kind of still sticking up a little bit. So when it comes time to attach fur onto the legs, sometimes I'll use little foam pads in between so that when I'm attaching the fur, I don't bend the legs and mess them up. It's actually really helpful and it gives a little bit of support so that when you start to attach the fur, you have something to press the legs against. And then, of course, when I'm doing the inside of the legs, I just felt it right up against the mat. And obviously one thing to be careful about is to not hit your needle against the wire inside the legs. So cute, it's getting there. It's starting to look like furry legs. So this is me just putting on the wavy curls and you can see as I go how the dog is looking more and more like it has real fur. I think it's so cute. So the reason why this dog's mouth is open is because I was asked to put his favorite Frisbee in his mouth. And here he is with all of the wavy fur finished. And then I'm gonna take the needle and just fluff up the fur a little bit. One thing I do like to do with the curls is to make some personality with the eyebrows. You can take a curl and use it to make a bigger eyebrow. 
I didn't actually show it on this video, but I had used the curls to lengthen his ears a little bit and also had started on the eyebrows before the video. And here's Sebastian, finished, wavy fur, looking like a cutie. So if you don't need really wavy fur and you want nice smooth curls, something that I do that's easier actually is just to take the whole string of curls and just tack it in kind of willy-nilly and not in any kind of uniform way, but just look for each curl and just start to tack it in like that. You don't have to cut it. This is just an example on a, on a lump of wool that I have just to show you what this could look like. But it's really pretty and it makes a nice solid curly kind of fur. I've used this method before with an entire dog and it looks really nice. I really appreciate your hanging out with me today and hope that was helpful, learning how to make the little wavy curls and also just the big smoother curls. So, and wavy curls. Whoa, 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 whoa. God, what a cutie, huh? Hope you come back. Hope you join me again. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining.